<clears throat> Hi, in this video we're going to talk about how to do a very simple animation. Um, uh, so really quickly we have this box here and some very basic styling. Its position is fixed, so it's going to be right here top left corner and it's not going to be uh, part of the normal flow of the document. We're going to go ahead and just do a simple animation that moves it <clears throat> with JavaScript. Uh, some animations can be done uh, with CSS, but we're just going to do it with JavaScript. <clears throat> um, so first off, we're going to put this code uh, so it starts when the window loads. So window dot um, center function. Um, and then we have to put load here. So if you saw another video I did, you'll notice here. Before, what I did is I um, uh, put the I put the um, <coughs> the uh, event in window dot on load and just assigned a function to it. Um, that sorry. Um, works. However, um, this is often considered a better way to do it because now you can have multiple functions associated with uh, the window loading. <clears throat> For this, we're only going to use one, so it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's a good thing to know. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the box in variable. So const box equals document get element ID box. <clears throat> Check here. Yep. Just the one box. <clears throat> Just the one thing I need. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to store the frame of the animation. So call, uh, frame equals zero. So every time a new frame of the animation, every time a new sort of picture, and if this is a flipbook, there are a bunch of pictures, each one's a frame. Every time there's a new frame, we want to increment this. <clears throat> and then we want to have the interval. So const interval equals set interval function here. I'm going to do it every 50 milliseconds. That sounds good. In this function, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the top and left values of the style in the box. So here we have top and left as zero pixels and zero pixels, zero from the top and zero from the left. And we're just going to change this every time based off of the frame. So first thing we need to do is frame. Frame needs to increment every time. Uh, next thing we need to do <clears throat> is we want to say, uh, actually, before we uh, move this, let's say we only want this to go for 10 uh, frames, just for whatever reason. Right. Um, say it's a, an animation that needs to stop at a certain point for the purposes of your website. What we'll do is we'll say if frame is greater than 10, uh, here interval, this is a built in function that lets us clear the stop interval we're already doing, pass in this interval up here. <clears throat> so we give it the, the ID of this interval that this function creates when it starts running the interval. Next what we'll do is we'll say box.style box style oops dot top equals and we'll determine how far from the top we want it based off of the frame. So we'll say frame, whatever the frame is, times 10. We need to give it pixels, because we need to tell it how, how, uh, uh, what unit to use here. <clears throat> and so what we'll see here is, is that we've got a number, and it converts it to a string when you tell it to add it to pixels, right? So this all becomes a string. We can do the same for the left value. There we go. There we 
go until it plays that animation. Now, if you wanted to do this on a loop, then what you could conceivably do is you would come over here and say frame equals zero. So when frame is greater than 10, frame equals zero. But then we'll comment this out and say don't actually clear the interval. We could even do make it go for longer. Um, now, <clears throat> really quickly, uh, this is going to set the stage for some ideas that we're going to have uh, when we talk a little bit more about um, a game. A lot of the next few videos are going to be um, <coughs> using the example of a, a very simple game in order to show you how to um, <coughs> do some more complex things with animations and whatnot in JavaScript. So that's it for this one, but um, in the next videos we will be doing uh, these same principles but in a different possibly, hopefully, more fun context.